There's only 24 hours in a day I got a pair of earbuds and I wish there was a way that I could know just what I want to listen to There's 150,000 shows that I'm not sitting through When the world is dark and boring Let us do your exploring Welcome to Pod on Pod, a guide to the world of podcasts because it's not your daddy's radio. We're your hosts, Joel and Josh, and this week we're going to be reviewing Decode DC. Every week we bring you a different podcast because there's just so much content out there. All of it's for free and all of it's waiting for you to find. Tons of stuff, whether you're looking for something about sports or politics, comedy, arts and entertainment. Uh, There's something for everybody, and every week we're going to bring you something different. This week, Decode DC from uh, Andrea Seabrook, producer, a name that you might recognize, especially if you're an NPR fan. Andrea Seabrook originally made her splash on All Things Considered in 2007 after six years of primarily reporting on the United States Congress for NPR. Um, She left NPR, though, in 2012 to form a new project. That's Decode DC. Uh, It was a partnership originally with SoundCloud and uh, then was eventually sold to EW Scripps, the uh, news organization, and is now a Scripps publication and production. That's big. It is. It's uh, it's kind of a big deal. And it's I think it's kind of big for the world of podcasting, too. It was interesting when her name came into this political podcast idea because she had come from you know, kind of an authoritarian group. NPR has got a lot of clout. And so she made a splash when she started this podcast. And then for them to be acquired so quickly in their inception, that made a big, big splash too. This is a show I've been listening to since the very beginning. I think I found it either week one or week two. And it was only because I saw somebody tweet about it. I said, hey, I want to check that out. And from right away, it, it struck me as a really entertaining, informative little way to get, you know, 15, 20 minutes worth of news into your brain. I'm going to be honest. I have a confession. Okay. When this came on the schedule for us to listen to and review. Yeah, it was. this is one of the ones I suggested. And all it said was Decode DC. <laughs> honest to God, I thought it was going to be a comic book podcast. You think it? it w- w- there should have been more clarification in the title? I thought we were about to talk about Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman and The Flash and Green Lantern. <laughs> no, sir. We're going to talk about Putin and Clinton and Obama and Bush. Yeah. But but not like the sexy kind. <laughs> 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 well, I don't know. It may be sexy. It depends on who you are, I suppose. Anyway, Decode DC, Andrea Seabrook, she brings you kind of like an alternate take. The idea is that it's an outsider's take on the goings-on in Washington. The, you know, the, um, the big media organizations have been kind of co-opted by both political parties and the corporations behind them. And the idea is that a lot of stories are going completely unreported because there's not a lot of money in telling those stories. And because of her outsider nature and because of the way that the organization is built, she's allowed to tell those stories and they don't have to worry about the overhead so much. And the best part about podcasting as a medium is there's no one, there's no laws. There's no, you can say whatever it is that you want to say. There's nothing, there's no, uh, oh, you can't say the F word, right? You can't say this you can't you have to release it on a sunday or you have to release it on a friday or you can't ask certain questions about democrats right or certain questions about conservatives or or whatever there's no you're right there's no faux pas there's no standards quote unquote and that's good and that's bad and that's one of the reasons why we think this show is a cool idea is because we can week to week bring you a little taste of a a different podcast and, and that way you might not be able to sample all of them on your own but you can get an idea of the breadth of content that's out there um this one in particular is i think a very good one we're going to be rating it as we do every week on the basis of four different criteria. First of all, we're going to talk about audio quality. Then we're going to talk about host likability. We're going to talk about production values and then the content itself. And then we'll wrap it all up by rating the show. Each of us give it uh, one half, a two possible earbuds. So the whole uh, panel, we can give uh, a possible four earbuds for the best show in the world. Do you put a higher value on one metric than another. Is host likability more important than 
audio sound quality i would say i would say content is the most important if i don't enjoy the thing that you are giving you're not gonna listen yes okay and and the reason i say that is because there are hosts that i like that have multiple shows and i don't listen to all of their shows that's true and it doesn't matter how much i like that host it doesn't matter how much i like you know their humor or their their organization or their their agenda or whatever if Mm -hmm. the content of that particular show isn't something that i care about I'm not going to find the 30 minutes, the 45 minutes, the hour and a half, whatever the length of that show might be every week to try to keep up with it okay, or every so month. So say you find a show that has great content, but the host is a jerk or the host's voice just gets on your nerves. Are you listening? Yeah, again, probably not. Like it's it's a it's an it's a magical uh, uh, you know concoction. It's just it's, it's chemistry. You got to get just the right balance of all those things in proportion to have a show that I'm going to want to subscribe to each and every week. For me, well, and we'll talk about it when we get to so that specific there could be, area. So there could be a show that hits all those buttons for you, and you still don't listen every week. And there could be a show that could have a mishap. On a couple of those, and you do listen every week. Oh, sure. Yeah. If you, I mean, if you're a hundred in one of the categories and you're a 65 and one, that doesn't mean that you, you know, or you're a, you're a 45 and one, that doesn't mean that you fail. Like you, you, you might still be the top of the bunch if almost all of your categories are hundreds and then you got one that's, that's very low. I'll say this I have ended listening several, uh, or ended subscribing to several shows simply because I couldn't stand the host anymore. Show was great. It was good content. There was, the production values were high. It was consistent. It was out every week, et cetera, et cetera. I just didn't like the host. If you don't want to li- – they're in your ears. You know, I mean, it's like it, podcasting is a very intimate art form, and I only want to invite certain people into my earbuds. I agree. So with the context that I thought it was a comic book show. Yes. You, you were in for a rude awakening. I was. That's true. And I listened to the first – the first episode I listened to, I was really like, man, I think pot on pot, I think the whole podcast that we're doing is just a bad idea if I'm going to have to listen to shows like this. <laughs> Wait, how long did it take you to realize that it wasn't a comic book show? Right. Oh, right off. The first, like as soon as there were quotes? Yes. You were like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. what is yeah. this about? I thought it was such a clever title, though. But see, that that that's something that, inter- here's an interesting point. Sometimes podcasters, imagine this, podcasters, like other creatives, can be too clever for their own good. True. You think the Decode DC, or at least get without context. Now, most people that are finding the show, you see the artwork, or you've gone to the website or something, and so you do have some context for it. You were seeing the name in a list of yeah, names. Yeah, and if it was called Inside Washington, boom, I know <laughs> what it is. Go. Uh, that's, of course, the Washington Redskins podcast. <laughs> yeah, touche. <laughs> um, so let's start breaking this show down uh, based on our uh, criteria as we do every week. Audio quality. Man, this is one of this is one of the, the gold standards for me. Are you kidding me? Really? You don't think so? It sounds like Radio Lab, man. I hate it. She, it's so well produced. I mean, and maybe that gets to production values, but like, to, th- here's the one I, problem that this she is, has. This is, this is what kills me. This is what kills me on it is the sections of the show where it's not in conversation and it's her just dropping in or surmising whatever portion of the conversation they just had. Yes. Clear, clean, concise, wonderful. And then you get into the portion of the show that is obviously a phone interview. I don't care what you do. You're always going to be able to tell it's a phone interview, and it drives me crazy. There's a guy on ESPN that does the same thing. Well, now see, but I I was going to say something about this too. My problem isn't the phone interviews. My problem is that she is also on the phone. There's no reason why you can't record her talking into a microphone straight into the audio and then record the other person on the Yes, there is. Why? I do it here all the time. I did it today. Because then... Because then... What happens is she sounds fantastic, and then just by comparison, the other audio is going to sound very poor. I disagree. I think there's a way to do that. Okay. Proper producers could fix that, and the rest of the show is so high quality. I will agree with you. Sometimes her, her phone call interviews in particular are terrible. Now, more often than not, she gets interviews in person, and those all sound very, very high quality. The, overall, she's got great musical choices in this thing. Well, this it's is also really another thing timing. that bothers me. 
I, I don't like the underlay of music. I don't like her speaking over music. I don't, That's an I don't, NPR thing. I don't need it. I don't need it. That adds not, no value. What value does that add to a podcast? It, well, it's not just a, it's not about adding value necessarily to the podcast. It's about uh, evoking it's generally about evoking a an emotional, an emotional response. response. And it is, and it's turn the music off, please. <laughs> I, turn the music off. I'm trying to listen to a podcast. Will you will you shut up that orchestra and start telling me about what's going on in Congress? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, she's you, so, playing. It's it's like he's at the Oscars and she's playing herself off stage. <laughs> you, you I have talked too long. Continuously thinking we're about to go to commercial. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, it, that moves us right into the production values. So, so what? So, what did you think about the? So, you don't like the music laid under her, but in general, so it's not always laid under her. Sometimes, like she'll make a point. Here's a statement, dramatic statement, dun, dun, dun. and then a music swell or a sound effect. Sometimes you hear like before we go into the, you know. Jonah Jonah Styles was born in the city, and it's you know a city soundscape in the background. When she uses it, she also, but she also uses it in transition a lot. Yeah, and that using it tra- that doesn't bother me. It's, it's you just gotta fade it up, fade it out. Right, but the the underlay, like if she gets three sentences in, and I'm still hearing music, I'm not happy. <laughs> I know I get notes about that on our own shows too. So that's that's something yeah, that that's you have pers- an issue with. A, yeah, I can't I can't deal with it. Uh, the, the, she comes from a long line of great production work. I mean, that's that's part of her heritage at NPR. This is the way that they do shows as well. This and it, you talked earlier about um, a radio production, and now when you first got into the world of podcasts, you kind of thought, "Oh, this is all just radio that's been clipped and, and put right. out on the internet." Right. This show sounds that way. This yes. show could be that way, and I don't know that it's currently airing on any NPR stations, but I'm imagining. NPR, local public, st- local AM talk stations, whatever. Lots of radio stations would probably be interested I don't, in re- I just rebroadcasting. Don't, I don't enjoy the format and style that the information is being delivered to me. And see, that was really good for me to hear, too, because I got to tell you, this is one of the shows that I have been, I've nagged people about this show because I do feel so strongly about it. The content, I think, is important, like to... People should know what's going on in government, okay, and nobody's so, paying attention. So, I feel getting like. into content, yeah, we can move into content. That's what won me over. After listening to the second episode, it was just it was a lot of the stories that she's covering are, are very interesting stuff. I didn't even know, didn't even think about the. In fact, I I uh, I went and had my I did my taxes today. Yes, and the. The episode which talks about the... Paperwork Reduction Act? Yes. It's a great one. Blew my hair back, man. I would have never even thought about it. One of the things that's broken down in that episode is is the total amount of time it's estimated that Americans take to do their taxes which isn't like Which is in the billions. Eight billion and change. It's, it's hours. more than 20,000 years. It, man years. It's more than 20,000 man years of time every year which for is Americans to do their taxes. Ridiculous because we were doing the taxes. The the lady who who does my taxes is like we're moving right along and and is talking about how how much time it's not taking and how quickly we're moving forward. Right. And I was like, "Well, you would be surprised, you know, at the amount of time that it takes for Americans to fill out their taxes." And I laid the stat and everything on her. And I was like, "So really, what you're doing's not that quick when you look at it in perspective." <laughs> Dropped a little knowledge yeah. from your podcast uh, uh, repertoire. Yeah, so that that episode engrossed me. The fear and loathing in I think it was called fear and loathing maybe in in Washington about gay issues going from where do they go from the eighties uh, and nineties episode the- episode thirty one fear and loathing in gay Washington that's yeah. the name of the episode. I found that very interesting. Just this is going to sound weird because it's a political podcast, but the, just the. The crazy politics involved, yes, is fascinating. I felt like I was in a spy movie during the government shutdown. In particular, there was an episode where they focused on since CNN and and Fox News are talking incessantly about the government shutdown. Let's talk about some things that no one is talking about. And there were like three or four stories that she touched on in that episode in particular. That's kind of their mo. They try to talk about something that is not in the current echo chamber of the news. Uh, 24 hour media cycle and I love that aspect of it the the content itself is so good though that it comes at the cost of frequency 
it's not a super regular podcast. She goes through that's sp- true. She goes through spurts of, and then she'll do reposts. Yes, it's yeah. uh, only thirty one episodes so far since twenty twelve when the show was started, and she's already had several reposts, and especially recently, like there'll be two or three reposts, and then there'll be one new episode, and two or three reposts, and one new episode. It's not weekly. Even when she's in the middle of production, it's like two weeks, I think, at a, at a stretch it's, in between episodes. It's not even monthly. Yeah, well, not consistently anyway. But I think right. I think the original idea of it was to do every two weeks or every month at least there'd be an episode. But it has not been that so regular. So while, in general, I don't go back and listen to, to uh, back libraries, back logs, uh, this is a show that I think lends itself really well to it. Oh, yeah. Because it's not like these issues. I mean, it's it's they're talking about the government. It's not moving quickly, folks. <laughs> yeah. Well, and not only that. So the issues are still relevant that she brings up in episode one all the way to episode 31. Well, but I mean, we, we know the cliche is that those who don't learn their history are destined to repeat it. So even even if the issue at hand is one that's kind of passe now, five, ten years from now, and the particular politics that she's discussing aren't current, the stories, the manner in which it was resolved will all matter and still be interesting. And it could be something that that is the genesis of something that changes in the future. Exactly, exactly. So for that, for the fact that she's building this independent media organization, I'm I'm excited about what she's got going so on. So I love the host. I think she's engaging. The host likability is where we are th- next. So I that's think that's it. pretty high. I think she's very engaging. I will say this. She can at times come off a little smug, dramatic. And, yeah, a little dramatic, a little self-important, and all of those, all of those I think things that just comes along with covering politics, man. Not just covering politics, but very specifically. I mean, and I don't know exactly what her politics are, but I would, I would, I wouldn't hesitate to say that she's a little progressive. If you listen to the shows, she everybody's got a little bit of an agenda. Well, she's a female reporting on politics. Yeah, very good point. But the, I think, and I'm guilty of this myself. When you tend to lean a little on the liberal side of the political spectrum, especially in the United States, part of that political outlook is this sense of optimism and not only of optimism, but, but like moral righteousness. Like like we are on the side of history. I, I do think she can she can ask pretty leading questions. Yeah. And if you But regardless, the information's still there. Sure. But if you were someone who is dead set on the opposite side of whatever political question she's currently discussing, I could see how that you were very well, screw this lady because she thinks mm-hmm. she's better than I am or smarter than I am right. or blah blah blah. So a little bit of the smugness I could see. But generally, yes, she knows her stuff. She's passionate about the topic that she's talking about and she is properly respectful and yet challenging to her to her guests, the people that she has on to interview. So the saving graces here for me are content and host likability. Uh, some of the other things I just downright loathe. See, I love all of it, except for maybe the fact that it doesn't come off it doesn't come out as often. That's my least favorite thing about this podcast. I wish it came out every week. Before we get to the actual rating of the show, as we do every week, we give you a rating out of a two possible earbuds for each of us, so every show can uh, be rated up to four earbuds. Uh, before we do that, though, we like to give you alternate names for the podcast, maybe a more truthful name, maybe more direct or more descriptive. This week, I'm going to say that Decode DC, we could rename it uh, Sex, Lies, and Podcasting. No. No? No. It's all about DC. It's it's all about scandal and and the underbelly and and the things going on behind closed doors. But it's not always but it's not always. All right then. One episode was about paperwork, man. Hey, paperwork can be sexy if it takes 20,000 years to fill out. <laughs> it's sexy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think it's I think it should be called Deco DC. No, the other one. <laughs> well what about uh what about the like the old ladies who are or not old ladies what about the real like uh poli sci people who are thinking the dc in the beginning but then they're like no the other one and they're like, oh superman and then they're disappointed in the podcast hmm hmm i don't care about those old ladies how about all the president's podcasts oh that's a good one yeah, yeah. hanging congress <laughs> hanging congress i like that what about down on the farm? Down on the farm? Yeah, it's DC, man. They got donkeys and elephants. Down, 
Well, I think you'd have to put that in the title. So it'd be it'd be like down on the farm with the donkeys and elephants. <laughs> Except the elephants still live on a farm. Or, or, That's a terrible did, title. If she was, if she was, uh, if she was <laughs> down on the farm. No, no, no. The other one. Think about it. The one like, with the elephants. <laughs> uh, Democrat. Democrats are the donkeys, right? Yes. Can you imagine if it was a democratic leaning show, and okay. it was just called the Donkey Show? <laughs> Because she's a little smug, it could be called the Donkey Show. <laughs> well, it could be called. Well, that's. I was trying to think about something like nothing but us asses or something like that. You know, you could. You know, if the, if it was a two panel, if it was a two person panel, if it was a Republican and a Democrat, you could call it the the Jackass and the Rhino. Republican in name only. Oh, yeah, right on. Like a Libertarian or whatever. Yeah, yeah. He was the the Jackass and the Rhino. The, the Jackass and the Rhino would actually be a great name for like a hard edged politics talk show yeah I like agree. a radio like hey we're you know 35 and tough but yeah. we're going to talk about the politics of the day the jackass and the jackass and the rhino would be a good politics podcast show actually like a humorous slant on dc right. let's put that in the old back pocket yeah yeah yeah, yeah. the jackass and the rhino okay, so let's get on name. to the um... i'm sorry yeah let's rate this thing yeah uh it okay i you want me to go first or you want to go first no, you can go ahead okay Two earbuds, man. This show is this show is one of the shows that I always suggest first when people are telling me that, hey, I'm just what's this podcasting thing or whatever. Or I, somebody told me that I might like podcasts. How do I do that? Decode DC is one of the ones that I suggest. I'm like, hey, do you like news? Do you but do you don't feel like you get enough of it? I love the Daily Show because it fits my schedule. They tell me a few things that happen during the day, and they do it in a way that I don't feel like is talking down to me. I wish that it was more serious. To me, Decode DC fills that void. I get real real news and political discussion without the satire, but I get it in a, in a short and a concise fashion, and again, without the fluff of, I don't know, the advertising or whatever. Unless I know... Unless I know that the person I'm talking to is a politics geek, I will probably never recommend the show. Never mention this one? Right. Yeah. But I did enjoy it, man. I like the content a lot. So I'm probably going to give it one earbud. Nice. All right, then. There you go. That's Decode DC, ladies and gentlemen. Check it out at DecodeDC.com or in your favorite uh, podcast app by searching Decode DC. That's from Andrea Seabrook. Until next week, I'm Joel. I'm Josh. And this has been Decode Podcasting. Are you wanting something funny? Are you wanting something smart? A show on astral projection, all the history of art. Do you want to learn a language or how to play guitar? You just leave it up to Joel and Josh. Right on Pod on Pod is a proud member of the Procast Network, a Procreate production. Procreate is a community of artists in film, music, the digital arts, and fine arts that helps connect and collaborate on projects. You can find out more at www.teamprocreate.com. Also be sure to check out the non-content podcast if you're a fan of gaming and or anime. The Pod on Pod theme song is written and performed by Adam Dale. Find his music in iTunes and more information about him on our website. Our musical guest this week is Harshdeep Mangat, and you can find more information about them in the description. Threatening to fall, Elisa smiling in for all And a hundred places for me to live around and ball Scaling up around the Acropolis, not eighth in the sacred section St. Peter's tiny oozes I'll be lying low and 
photographing Rushmore After all of this is over, I'm sure I want more Gazing and lazing round the Trevi Fountain And laying flat on the South Table Mountain A oh, oh, world full of wonders, a life with some thunder Rolling down the Eden Crater, walking up the Eiffel Tower 80 days is what you need, the moon walk the right piece And this sensation that all of this might be a dream It ain't, yeah this world we made Some beauty worth a swirl around every corner of this world the press, everything a mess You can look alive, but you are not at rest And I, ideas are flowing through your head A million miles an hour, a lion in your bed A world is a lie, if you know what you need Like another day, like I'm just a bee I know, I know, I know, I know, I know Voting a flight, don't know where it goes I'll be happy to see, even overseas bees Anything that's beautiful, well, everything is beautiful I hear the birds chirping, I hear them dogs barking This land from the gods, my tour won't stop Cause I'm only begun and every day's a stop So now I went along the Alps, all the way to Switzerland Down to my neck, we're driving cars, same Michelin NYC, N-T-O-B, everywhere I can, everywhere I want So much in this world, I might just lose count Make a to-do list and probably pin them all down I got so much to express, I can write a book for the press You got one life, live it till you're a life And I'll be living it around the world Yeah, you made a beauty, seriously, worth the swirl I'll slide the press, everything a mess You can look alive, but you are not at rest And I, ideas are flowing through your head A million miles an hour, a lion in your bed A lucid life, you never thought you'd lead Are you working every day, are you working just to bleed? I know, I know, I know